Eight hours after launch, they rendezvous with Skylab and see the damage close up. Houston is now controlling. Roger, copy. In brief description, it is suspected solar wing is gone. The crew has to enter Skylab to repair it. Completely off the bird. 270 miles above the Earth. Is it that partially... Traveling at more than 17,000 miles an hour. Pete Conrad must perform a precise hard dock. We went to dock, and uh, the soft dock failed. There were little capture latches in the nose of the docking probe, and for some reason they were stuck shut and they never came open. We're sitting there contemplating the fact that if we can't dock, the mission is over. They'll bring us home tomorrow. But there was one final backup procedure that uh, had never been used. If you got in there tight, they would go. So Pete gets all set for one more go, and he bumps in, and he's applying the rocket thrust. Ground said it would take about 10 seconds. If it doesn't work in 10 seconds, it's not going to work. And we're counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Rabbit tat tat, man, and all the latches last. It was like an explosion up there. And uh, oh, we were so relieved. So we are progressing slow but sure, and everything so far is working. It didn't smell very good. It had a sort of a burned smell to it. crew gets to work in Skylab's searing heat. The astronauts take turns trying to deploy the parasol. They put out this parasol, which was extended out through a little 10 by 10 inch aperture. Okay, Houston, we had a clean deployment as far as the rods clearing and everything. Now, right at the moment... And then a spring was released and the fishing rods pulled up. Oscillated the rod in and out, stroke-wise. It was successful, and the temperatures began to come down. They came down from the 130s to the mid-80s. But Skylab has an even bigger problem. One solar panel had been damaged during launch and still isn't working. The problem with the solar panel was out where there were no handholds, no footholds, no lighting. Uh, where no crew member was supposed to go. Yet it had to be done, so let's figure out ways to do it. A backup team works with a full-size model of Skylab in a neutral buoyancy tank. Their solution is unprecedented in manned spaceflight. For the first time, crews going outside in their spacesuits to repair problems that had never been done before. Okay, Houston, we're out there. We, uh, we have the debris in sight. The other solar panel is jammed by a small piece of metal preventing it from opening. If they can cut it, the panel should unfold. There looks like enough room to get the cutter. And uh, I'm trying to help Joe stabilize. Just take it easy. We had a limb lock the kind of thing that they use to trim tree limbs away from power lines. It had two brown ropes attached to it. One would close the jaws, and the other would open the jaws. No, that's it. You got it right there. I pulled on the close the jaws rope Pull back. and completed cutting the aluminum scrap. We were going to get our power back. We were going to be able to complete the mission. That was a good day. That was a very good day. The space station is open for business. 
Over the next eight months, Skylab is home to three crews, each setting new records for astronauts living and working in space. You fly from one side to the other. We had erected handrails in there to move along. You don't do that. You don't use any of that stuff. Uh, I can remember the first week or so, I'd do flips on the way. The feeling of being Peter Pan, of being your own spacecraft flying around the Earth is awesome and, 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 and incredible. We were zipping around there as if we had never been other than weightless. Skylab crews log more than 3,000 hours of scientific experiments and transform our understanding of the sun. The work itself was fun, because this is kind of work that had never been done before. Skylab is the first step toward the human habitation of space. Jerry Carr, William Pogue, and Edward Gibson are Skylab's last crew. They went for 84 days, came back with less weight loss, less loss in muscle strength, in better shape all around than either of the first two crews. When we returned from the, the mission, the doctors uh, opined that maybe uh, we were in better condition when we got back than when we left. We demonstrated that you could go three months in space and come back in good shape. That was a triumph. The technology of the Apollo program not only carries astronauts to the moon and back, but allows humans to live and work in space longer than ever before. Space is basically a test of survival. Our ability to invent things that will allow us to use very limited resources. We have to use everything, and you have to use it as most efficiently and effectively as possible. Skylab provides the foundation for a permanent human presence in space and the exploration of worlds deep into the solar system. The power of space was to raise our aspirations to those things that are possible if we will commit. <laughs>